Let's show another very important property of Hermitian operators, namely that their eigenfunctions are orthogonal. And again, we're going to work with the example of the, the theta operator coming from Maxwell. And let's say we have a magnetic field H1, which has a certain resonance frequency omega 1. And then we have a second solution, second eigen solution H2, with resonance frequency omega 2. Can we show that H1 and H2 are orthogonal based on the scalar product that we have defined? So in order to do that, we're going to calculate two expressions. The first one being H1 and then theta H2. And the second expression being theta H1 H2. So what I suggest you do is pause the video, write down what these things are equal to based on the form of our eigenvalue problem, and then subtract these two equations and then see what happens if you can magically prove that the eigenfunctions are orthogonal. So pause the video and have a go at this. So h1 is of course h1, but theta h2, since we have an eigen problem, um, theta h2 is going to be equal to the eigenvalue, which in our case for h2 is omega 2 squared mu times h2. Okay, so this is what we have when we uh, substitute the fact that here uh, we have an eigen solution h2. And let's do the same thing for the second equation. If we have an eigen solution h1, that will give us an eigenvalue omega 1 squared mu h1 h2. Okay, so let's now subtract these two equations and let's first have a look at these two uh, left hand sides here. Important is of course that we're dealing with a Hermitian operator and the definition of a Hermitian operator is that it doesn't really matter whether we operate with our operator first on the second factor or first on the first factor over here. So because we have a Hermitian operator, these guys, these two left hand sides are actually the same. So if we subtract them, we end up with zero. And then here we have, uh, what do we have? Omega two squared, omega one squared mu, and then the scalar product h1, h2. So now we're almost there, but we need to be a little bit careful. Let's first have a look at the situation where omega 1 is different from omega 2. And uh, therefore, this factor over here is not 0. Mu, of course, is uh, of course not 0 because we're typically working with non-magnetic media over here. Um, so the only conclusion there is that the scalar product h1 and h2 is zero. So this means uh, that under the definition of our scalar product, h1 and h2 are orthogonal. Of course, we need to deal with a situation where omega 1 and omega 2 happen to be the same. Um, that's a very specific case. So now we have zero is equal to zero. And this guy here, which we're interested in, uh, disappears. Um, so now we need to be a little bit more careful. And by the way, this situation where two different eigenfunctions happen to have by chance the same eigenvalue, this is called degeneracy. So here we're dealing with so-called degenerate modes. So if we're dealing with, uh, with degenerate modes, since we have the fact that our operator theta here is actually a, a linear operator, this means that if we have a solution H1, so uh, theta, if we have theta H1 is omega squared mu H1, and also theta H2, the same eigenvalue omega squared mu H2, then it's very easy to say, to see that if you take a linear combination, let's say alpha uh, H1 plus beta H2, that this is also going to be an eigenfunction with again the same uh, eigenvalue. So just multiply the first equation by alpha and the second equation by beta. And then you see indeed that this guy is also an eigenfunction with the same eigenvalue omega squared mu. So basically you have in this case a whole space of eigenfunctions spanned by these two solutions. And then obviously, if you have this linear subspace here, it will be possible to construct a certain linear combination of, or two, cert, 
two linear combinations which are orthogonal to each other. And there's a well-known procedure from linear algebra there, which is the so-called uh, Gram-Schmidt. Uh, um, not exactly sure I'm spelling this right, probably not. But the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure, which will allow you to find within this family, this two-dimensional family of uh, functions, to find two functions which are orthogonal. So the general conclusion is, if we uh, are a little bit more nuanced, is that if you have a Hermitian operator, then it will always be possible to find a, a set of eigenfunctions which are orthogonal. And if you're dealing with degenerate modes, you need to do a little bit more extra work, but it will always be possible to find eigenfunctions which are uh, orthogonal. By the way, speaking of degenerate modes, it's also the case that if you have a certain solution H, that then if you uh, multiply H by a scalar, that alpha H will also be a solution. That's very trivial. Uh, but in this case, we're not really saying that H and alpha H are degenerate modes, because this is so trivial, just multiplying by a scalar here, we're actually considering those to be the same modes and not two different modes which are degenerate. But that's just a piece of terminology uh, convention that we uh, that we use. So these guys, they're not degenerate, they're actually the same uh, mode. Okay.